we're chasing bread and butter species at the moment and when you first get to the beach, sometimes it's a little bit hard to, to think about, well, what might be the best bait to start with? Now, I'm a big fan of local bait. By that I mean the type of bait you might find in the area where you're fishing. Around here at the moment, there's, there's plenty of beach worms. That's my starting point, I've got a worm out there. When you do come to a new area that you're gonna fish, sometimes go to the local tackle store and find out what some of that bait supply might be. It may be pippies, it may be worms, it may be something else. They might be feeding well on prawns at the time. Find out, a good rule of thumb is always fresh is best, and then sometimes just good old experimentation until you find something that's working. So what we're going to do now is show you a little bit on beach worming. They are one of the free baits available to us on the beach. So it's worth your while learning to catch them. They're a great bait for bread and butter species like whiting and brim and your swallowtail dart, nice big tarwine. So take the trouble to learn to catch them. And what we do now is I'll just, I'll just take you through a few steps on, on how I catch them. We've waved a stinky bag and we've attracted a few worms. Actually give him the bait like so. Comes right out. Coming in with the other fingers around 45 degrees. Just keep squeezing slowly till you can't squeeze any harder like that. And then just start pulling. And once you start pulling, don't stop pulling. Just keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. And there we go. We've got about 15 pieces of the most prime beach fishing bait we could possibly get. It's worth quite a bit in tackle stores too, so it's worth our while learning to catch them. And uh, the best way to preserve them too, we'll, we'll show you. And that's actually just putting them in, in some fine sand. So we've pulled up at a beautiful low tide gutter. It's a nice little grain. We're hoping to target whiting in this instance. So what we're doing is we're going to fish quite light. We're using a fairly small ball sinker in this case. The small running sinker, which will run between two swivels. The beauty of running the sinker between two swivels too is we find that having the swivel as the top item in the line uh, will definitely eliminate or reduce line twist. So from there we go from the small swivel down to a bit of plastic tube which really just imitates the worm. It makes that worm look a little bit longer than it really is and it uh, hopefully works as an attractant to draw the whiting in. And then we've got a fairly small hook for the whiting. Uh, that's number four Aberdeen. And yeah, they're a great little hook, really, really sharp and I find that they, they do the trick. Beach worms are a favoured bait by a lot of anglers that work the beach for good reason. There are a lot of fish coming into the beach like nothing better than a well presented beach worm. Now to rig them today, obviously rigging them on an Aberdeen Mustad number four. And for me, a well presented worm bait is one where I thread it onto the hook and then I use the eye of the hook a bit like a keeper and what I'll do is actually force the worm over the top of that hook so that it presents nice and straight. On top of that we've got our nice little red tubing but we've got a nice straight bait that's going to drift around very seductively with the water flow of the beach and any fish which comes along that could quite easily suck that bait and that hook in so that we've got a good chance of hooking it. Nice and easy, well presented, ready for action. This is one of the tailor rigs I use on the beach. It just consists of a fairly large running sinker I always put a bead underneath it because it prevents that big sinker bashing the knot and it will cut through the line. Uh, from there I track down to a Lumo bead. I believe that the bigger tailor are nocturnal and by having that bead on your line will certainly uh, attract the fish to your bait. Uh, from there we go down to a pilly rig. It's a standard old West Australian pilchard and we put that on with a three gang. And to, to do this we just simply lay the, uh, lay the hooks across the pilchard like so. Mark it where bend in the top hook coincides with the eye and from there we just mark that spot there with our finger push the back hook through and all going well we work our way forward that top hook should line up through the eye like so beautiful and by towing the the bait from the eye it gives it a nice strong towing point lays, lays nice and straight like that and should track through the water beautifully so look, all going well, we'll toss that in the, uh, in the surf and see how we go. Hopefully we come up with the goods. We 
background behind me, you can see Rob throwing a metal slug. He's also spinning with one of the, the high ratio alvies, which allows you to spin through the beach environment. I'm using a slightly different outfit. I've got a beach rod, and it's loaded with a thread line reel. I'm also using a big soft plastic rigged up on a one ounce jigger. Now this is one of the, the TT Ballyhoos, and it looks a lot like a garfish. And the, the reason I got that on is, Big Taylor, love a well presented garfish. So I'm trying to spin this through the gutter on the off chance. There might be a big predator sitting in there that might think this is dinner. Different ways of spinning, and they all work. Just find out what's comfortable for you. Choose the lure you think is going to catch fish, and it probably will, and put it in front of the right spot. Whip it around the gutter, and before long, you never know. gathering this is what we look for the crack in the sand with the tires are driven over it put your sand spike down lift it out gently turn it over there you have a pippy there's another simple beach rig that I see guys like Rob Duncan using a whole lot it's one of Rob's favorite rigs and while he's in the background throwing a line I'll just quickly run you through how it works and some of its benefits. Once again, we're using a running style rig, a couple of swivels above a running sinker. And then we've got about a 40 centimeter line of trace and it's connected to two true turn hooks. It's a great rig for fishing little strip flesh baits in the surf for your species like your brim, dart, and tailor. An adaption to the rig is that some of the guys like to tie a short length of wire when they know there's a few bodies around, but then there's a lot of anglers that also, they're a bit cautious that sometimes that wire can scare fish away and sometimes choose to do without it and, and risk a bite off. But you've got plenty of hook gate which means you can fish a nice little strip bait. A couple of points means you've got more chance of hook up and also less chance of bite offs. This little true turn swivel base rig is perfect for fishing strip flesh baits of fish like got a nice strip of striped tuna here. It's an ideal bait, nice bloody bait which fishes well in the surf for your species like your brim and your tailor. A good starting point is to cut a thin bite sized strip of your flesh which matches the length of your rig. Having done that, I like just to lie the rig alongside the bait just to see where the hook points should ideally sit. Start at the bottom of the bait, pull your first hook right through so that it's going to sit much along the back of the bait and then pull your top hook through. And there you go, it's a well presented bait that's going to line up flat and drift around with the action of the waves. And any fish that comes along and grabs that, there's a fair chance you're going to have a good penetration and good hookup rate because you've got no points with a little bit of exposed gape. Good looking, attractive bait. It's also really nice and oily as tuna is, which makes it an ideal strip bait to throw in the surf. It's always nice if you get the chance to fish the beaches with a, a team of your mates. Because what it really does is lets you work a few different options, particularly where you're chasing a few different species where some fish might like a worm bait and fish closer to the beach, others might like a flesh bait and fish further away, is you can mix and match and fish a bit as a team. Today I'm fishing with a great bunch of guys and we've really mixed it up how we're going to do it. A couple of us have fished worm baits, pippy baits, and a couple of us have got flesh baits which we put into deeper parts of the gutter and it's been a great way just to see what fish are out there and what, what mood they might be in, what the diet might really comprise of at the moment. And the benefit has been we've seen a range of species. And Here we go. Evening is setting. And a big pilly at the back of the gutter has just been gabushkid. Not sure what it is yet. Are we hoping this is the time of day when Hugh Taylor might come and play for us? It's not, it's just a big dart. A big pilly munch of dart getting hooked on gangs. It's all right, fun and games. Woo! It's not a bad dart, actually. Shows you what you can catch on a big bait. Principle of big bait, big fish sometimes does work. And you're fishing in the gutters. Yeah. Shows you how aggressive these guys are. We've been targeting them using worm baits and I'll come out and munch a pilly on gangs, meant for a tailor. Fighting above their weight, but that's what they do. 
little fiery predators of the gutters. And they're making hay while we're waiting for a few tailors to show up. I tell you what, they're a whole lot of fun. <laughs>